have said that because she's kind of, she doesn't like me. Really? Uh, she doesn't see that piece of me. No, I'm not. <laughs> but I didn't think so. I didn't laugh. Yeah. Have you ever heard you said that? Calvin Castine here at Olympic Stadium on this August 15th, 2003. We're here for the first game of a four-game set between the San Francisco Giants, last year's National League champions, now managed by Philippe Alou, former Montreal manager, and, of course, the Montreal Expos. We're here along with uh, John Southwick and Caleb Castine. And in a moment or two, we're expecting Philippe Alou to come out here and be interviewed by some of the... TV uh, people who have gathered around, and we'll try to eavesdrop. I'm in, with all the uniform and busy trying to to win games and trying to keep first place and and go to the playoff with this team and uh, we have injuries. Our best player now is back home with his father who's ill and all that. So I have plenty of things to worry about. Uh, so I don't want to be nostalgic or anything. I, I just gonna want to go baseball 100%. And tomorrow is another day I'm going to go to Laval and, and visit with family and friends over there. Right. A tough way to come into this series, hasn't it? What is it? A tough way to come into this series. Yeah, yeah well, it's okay, you know, but it's bright here tonight. <laughs> uh, we, we had a tough time coming in from New York to Montreal, but, but we're ready to play baseball tonight. That, that's the main thing. Felipe, I don't know if you're aware of it, but this week marked the anniversary of the player's strike in 94. What are your thoughts about that team as you come back here? Well, we, we had an incredible ball club that year, and uh, I didn't have any doubts that we were going to, to go all the way. I still see the player. I still see Grissom. I still see Walker and Moises Salou and uh, Pedro Martinez. Just to mention some of the guys that were on that team. And uh, we had a team to win it all. Unfortunately, they went on strike and we didn't win. And maybe that was one of the worst things that ever happened to, to baseball in Montreal, that we, we were not given an opportunity to win it. But, uh, could could uh, you compare this team you managed you know, we have a different in? team. I think the, the, the team that we had then was a very young ball club. Uh, over here, we have a team that sometimes I have five guys that are from the mid-30 to, to the 40. So this is a club that I have to be very careful managing uh, their innings and managing their games that they play and where they play, especially on, on this turf here. I have to be careful with Santiago Grissom, Galarraga, and Barry Bond. Unfortunately, he's not uh, he's not with the club, but I was planning on not playing him over the four games. So I have to really be alert with, especially in hot weather city, so that we don't get this club too tired. Uh, because in the last few days we have been sliding a little bit and lo lost some of the big lead that we had. Do you manage your team differently with Barry Bonds in the lineup or 
without very much? Well, there's not a whole lot we can do. Uh, uh, my best runner is on the disabled list. But I, I was envisioning a running team, but uh, Ray Duran have been out twice on the disabled list and once for 10 days. So it's a lot. You're looking at 40 ball games only, yeah, almost. And uh, we bury ball, we, we wait for him to hit the home run. We don't want to have people get thrown out before he comes to bat. Uh, with, with him out of the lineup, uh, I, having Durham, we still don't have the speed. So I do some little bit of more hit and running and more being more creative, but we just don't have the means to go ahead and overwhelm anybody. We have not been overwhelming too many teams, but the guys know how to win games, they know how to get the big hit, especially uh, we have an incredible defensive team here. We, uh, we have been the best or next to best defensive team in the National League the entire season. So you're playing Felipe ball, in other words? Not yeah, really, you know, they, I'm letting these guys play baseball, you know. They, they, uh, they went to the World Series last year. They know what it takes. I, I like to manage my, my, my pitcher more than anything else. Uh, I like to make the move. We have an incredible deep bullpen. And that have been, in fact, you know, a carrier, the brunt or the pitch in the bullpen because we have, well, sometimes we have three young guys starting. Was it your and idea? And that we had, we had uh, Mr. Uh, uh, the opening day guys being out on the disabled list. In fact, he's been out twice, a reader. Schmidt hasn't really been pitching much since the uh, All-Star break. So we, we've been kind of pitching young guys a lot and the bullpen have carried most of the, most of the weight. Was it your idea to bring Grissom back or? On board? No, he was available, and um, uh, our general manager liked him a lot, Brian Savion, and he asked me, and I said, oh, of course, we, we like Grissom, the kind of man he is, and it turned out to be that Grissom is, was one of our better players. What's, Thank the, you. what's the team focus right now? Does the team think playoff at this point? or? No, we're not talking playoff. We're talking one game at a time. One game at a time. Mm -hmm. We don't want to play off too far away. We're thinking about tonight's game. Okay, and finally, uh, the future of the Expos is very, we don't know, and you don't know, I know, but are you concerned and what's, what is the solution for you? I don't know, I don't know what the solution is. I didn't know it when I was here. And uh, I really don't want to get into many details uh, about the Expos, because even though I have them all in the bottom of my heart, mm -hmm. I just don't want anybody to have the slightest, the slightest, of the uh, idea that I'm trying to tamper with anybody. Okay. Okay. Thank you're you very much. You're welcome. John Southwick, Felipe Lou, a popular figure here in uh, Montreal. And here's another popular figure here in Montreal. Andres Galarraga giving out Autographs by the bundle. Nice to see somebody do that. Don't tug on your neck. That's what Joanne says to me. Don't tug on your neck. Don't put your hands in your hair. Put them behind your back like uh, Jack Kennedy used to do. Okay, so you're in the you're I'm in the pose. I'm in the pose. Look at the camera. Okay. Okay, we've uh, got Caleb Castine on the camera now, and uh, John Southwick. We waited uh, pretty close to an hour there, about 50 to 55 minutes for a scheduled 5:15 appearance by Felipe Alou. If our friend, the late Bob Ben, had been here, he would have uh, given Felipe a piece of his mind for being late, wouldn't he? He sure would have. He would have <laughs> charged him for what, 45, 40, 43 minutes late. He would have told him exactly how many minutes he was late. <laughs> And how dare and, he waste our time. And the number of people who are waiting for him. Yes, yes, that's right. He once told the bishop, who was uh, five minutes late, that he was uh, about 300 people were there. So he told him he was 300 times five let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. late. <laughs> he said, how is that possible? Well, <laughs> you kept 300 people waiting five minutes. So, so <laughs> he was very uh, prompt and expected everybody else to be. I'm well, sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> So when Bob and I had a disagreement, it was usually because I was five minutes late to pick him up. But 
We're not here to talk about Bob. We're here to talk about the uh, Montreal Expos and a little bit about baseball. It's nice to see Felipe back here, and he didn't want to get into anything controversial about uh, the team or anything. He just uh, he's enjoying himself. He's in. A he seems to be. He's relaxed, and uh, he's really a um, uh, overused word, a class act. Oh, he answers questions, and he's got a great team, and it. Other than Bonds and uh, Grissom, and we went down the list, and uh, I just couldn't recognize a number of those players. Yeah, Andres Galarraga and uh, Grissom yeah. and Bonds, uh, a lot of players that uh, probably aren't that familiar to the average person, but uh, they're defending National League champions, so they're doing something right. And they're and, up. And of course, it's unusual for a manager to step into a situation where he is managing the defending champions, but uh, for some reason, uh, Dusty Baker and uh, the Giants. I haven't been getting along, and he's uh, now with the Cubs. I liked his answer when he uh, was asked about the difference between managing the Expos and the Giants when he said the Expos were a young team back in 90. Was it 94 when the strike was? Yes. Compared now, and he said a lot of his players are over 30, and he has to be careful about how many uh, how many games they play and games in a row and what kind of turf. And so he's really managing. Yeah, he's uh, giving it a lot of thought and. Uh, you know, he's playing a, playing a chess game out there. Even though he's uh, got a fairly comfortable lead out in the West, he's uh, not sitting on it. He's working it. You and I talked uh, just before uh, we came about their addition of Ponson giving up two young pitchers. And I said, I didn't think that that was a good trade. And you said you thought it was a good trade, and at least for this year. Yeah, uh, prospects. Uh, you know, when they come back and they have successful careers, yeah, it looks, looks like you made a bad deal, but there's so many prospects that you never hear of again. It's so true. Prospects are sometimes suspects. It's true. <laughs> it's very true. Very true. Um, you're a uh, St. Louis fan, and uh, last well, a couple times ago when I was here, it was Gary Carter night, and uh, Gary Carter as you know, was a little concerned about which cap you'd be wearing in the in the Hall of Fame, and it ended up being an Expos cap. And as he tried to explain here that night, his only fear of the Expos is that if the team doesn't have any future here in Montreal, obvious that the Expos name isn't going to be carried on, and a team moves to another city, it'll probably pick up another name. And if you think back, uh, a team like the Braves, who went from Boston to Milwaukee. They've they kept their up. identity, mm -hmm. and uh, the Dodgers, Dodgers, the Giants, and Giants. And yep. the Philadelphia A's, the Kansas City A's, the Oakland A's. But the teams that uh, lost their identities, like the Washington Senators twice with the Twins and the Rangers. St. Louis and your Browns. old favorite team. Uh, St. Louis wearing Browns. The, you're wearing the orange of the St. Louis Browns here with tonight. The St. Louis Browns, uh, there's probably a small percentage of baseball fans that are under 50 that, or even under 40 or that uh, know that St. Louis Browns are now the Baltimore Orioles, so their history is gone, really. They had a great team in 44, too. Long before you were born, Calvin. <laughs> well, a few years. Pete Gray, Pete Gray. One arm. One arm, Pete one Gray. Player. He was playing for the Browns. I thought he was with the Senators. Was it Browns? Yep, and then he played, uh, I, you know, I've been trying to think of the, uh, you've got to be careful how you use this word, the short player that was brought up by the Browns to get walks. Gosh. If, uh, if Dr. Uh, Rich Frost was here, he'd know the name of it. So this was before Eddie Goddell would... Uh, that's it. Well, Eddie Goddell was brought up by uh, Bill Vec one yeah, year. that's right. That's that right. wasn't... He wasn't there. He just won. He only had one, 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 one plate, plate appearance. One plate appearance, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, so I can understand Carter in that respect because when the Expos leave here and they... I think it's all but assured they will leave here. Expo's name is not a name they're going to carry with them to whatever city they're going to. So 20 years from now, the new generation of fans won't know anything about the Montreal Expo, just like the generation of fans now know nothing about the St. Louis Browns. All right. Or the Washington Senators. Right. So I think that there is something to be said for that, that thought in his defense. Yeah. But uh, Carter was uh, popular with the media. In some ways, he's like a Pete Rose because he always had a smile and a handshake for the media. Well, I liked him more as an expo than I did with the with the Mets. I thought he got a little uh, 
cocky when he went to the Mets. I agree with you at 100%. 100%. <laughs> uh, he was an aggressive, like Pete Rose, he was an aggressive 110% player every day. Now there's a, a phrase that is now common, but the first time that was ever used was for Pete Rose, and that's the 110%. That's right. Now the first, that's the first person that was ever said about, and now it's as common uh, modified B players give 110%. But uh, they, they had to find a way to define the way Pete Rose played, because a lot of people give 100%, and he just seemed to give that little extra, and that's where the phrase came from, and now it's part of our, our American slang. Overused. It is, it is. Cause Everybody who hustles now gives 110%. So, so I guess you got to give 120 if you want to be better than a guy. At least 115 <laughs> anyway. Huh? Uh, good news, bad news here, John. Uh, the uh, bad news is that Barry Bonds will not be playing in this uh, four-game series. The good news is Barry Bonds won't be playing in this four-game series. That's right. So but Philippe said he probably wouldn't have used him. In not the every game. No. No, he, uh, Particularly on the on the artificial turf. Yeah, I know uh, last year when they were up here, uh, Dusty had sat him out one game. He pinch hit in that game. Mickey Homer did that pinch hit, but yeah, he, he wouldn't be playing uh, full time. And obviously in the National League, you can't use him as a DH. He's either going to be on the field or uh, on the bench. Which is the way it should be. Baseball should be played without the DH. Okay. All right. So taking the batting cage off, and we'll leave you with that. The man is a purist. St. Louis Browns fan, no DH. He's still living in 1944. <laughs> the only time I cheered against the Cardinals was in 1944. The, Cardinals the, Browns, the Browns and the Cardinals were in the World Series, right? <laughs> if they make it this year, he'll be uh, cheering against the Yankees. I suspect so, <laughs> yes. Okay, thanks, John Southwick, and thanks, Caleb, for running that camera. You like the performance of Levon today? I like that. <laughs> I like it. I like it so I want to pitch him again tomorrow. <laughs> no, that was just an excellent, excellent outing. Exactly what the staff needed, exactly what we needed in this situation. Gets us off to a good start in the series. He makes it look so easy out there. You know, you just have to rub your eyes once in a while to see if it's really happening at the time. But he's, a, he's an outstanding uh, athlete. He's a good pitcher. He, he knows what he wants to do, and he goes out there and he does it and has good success doing it. He used to enjoy getting on base, too. He enjoys hitting. <laughs> I don't think he likes to run it, but he enjoys hitting. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he can help himself with the bat uh, both ways, sacrificing the uh, runners over and uh, uh, throwing in the hit most of all. And he's an excellent fielder, and that's very important because uh, a lot of balls are hit back up through the box that uh, a lot of most pitchers don't feel. Uh, he just grabs them like he's, uh, you know, playing the Sunday afternoon uh, pickup league. And it's just, as I say, I can't say enough about him. He's just an a excellent athlete. And uh, he's a solid pitcher. And uh, he's a shot in the arm to us. He really is, because you know you don't need too many runs when he goes out there. Thank you, Frank. Good. We'll see. Mm -hmm. I hope you all <laughs> so two questions. I have two uh, how about Vladdy? Is Vladdy getting his timing back? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. It didn't look like it tonight. Well, tonight was not, not, not a good night for him, but uh, he's swinging the bat well, and that's the main thing. He's not complaining about his back, and that's what I'm concerned about. As long as he's not doing that, he'll be all right. Timely hitting, Frank. Uh, as always, you know, that's what we have to get uh, because, again, I hate to keep saying it, we're not going to run anybody off the field. Uh, but it was time to hit it tonight, and they added a run there. He drove uh, in the first inning. That was a big shot. No, not only we scored a run, it's the way we scored it. And we scored it right quick, and uh, second hitter up there. And it was like they picked me up. Everybody then seemed to come alive a little bit. And uh, adding a run, Snyder added a big run. Cadera uh, had a big hit for us. And uh, uh, Will had another big sacrifice fly. And uh, that's, that's what we need. And uh, if we can get that, then uh, we, we, we'll, I'll take our chances. We can get uh, what we got tonight and play the way we played tonight offensively. I'll take my chances. Frank, we all knew uh, Levon was a good pitcher, but did you expect him to be this dominating? Well, I don't expect anything when someone comes here. I just wait and see what I see. But uh, to ask your question, uh, no. Uh, I don't think anyone could have predicted this. I don't even think he would have predicted this. But, uh, you know, he's been what uh, we needed here. 
and he set the tone for us. And when he goes out there, we feel like we're going to win a ball game, we can, unless we get shut out. And uh, he uh, doesn't give up much. And if you don't get him in the first two, uh, one or two innings, uh, he gets tougher as the game goes along. And uh, he saves the pitching staff. He wants to go nine innings each time out there. He doesn't want to come out the ball game. You were in baseball for many years. I'd like to talk about uh, the seventh inning when Philippe Pelu came on the mound to, uh, to pull out his uh, starting pitcher. Have you ever seen uh, <laughs> I think, you know, I uh, got the day off yesterday. Come over here with a little bit. I don't want to be, you know, losing. Come into the stadium, work out, and try to stay, you know, stronger today. You know, come to it like the same the other time. Uh, come in, try to uh, not miss a lot of vision. Try to work inside, outside. Yeah. Try to throw the down. How was, how was your motivation to pitch against your former team? No, I don't, you know, I don't got, I don't, I don't matter nobody. I don't, you know, I try to do my job. I want to win it. Do the best I can. So I go outside, like a different thing. So I try, try to win, try to stay long. Don't miss a lot of people. What is this, this, this slow curve that you use? Any no. times in the next few minutes? Yeah, people <laughs> call the. I want to say the number. People call it the illegal. You know, it's a, my friends in Miami. A couple of people are here. I throw it, and, you know, I throw it for a strike and people swing it, I don't know, you know, so is that I don't want to people look bad in the whole play, I throw it because it's the one pitch I got thrown in the game, you know, for, I want to see people swing you know. Do you have any idea what is the speed of this pitch? I think I throw it in, in Houston, around 50, 658. It's a more slow one throw the ship. So let's see how here is you know got speaking. You're talking about that one way down door? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You look real good on that one. Thank you. No, try the the hit the ball, the, you know, I want some basic because I'm a little strong in the home plate. So I try to hit bases. So I go home play and bomb the first time, bases the second time, and walk the third time. So, you know, I look better on home play now, so I want to keep it like that so I can hit it. Let's see, I can hit it in 18, 20 hit this year. Ivan, is it easy to focus on the, the Giants lineup when you have bonds out of the line? You know, bombings and all that, you know, the guy is sick. Are, like, are you happy? Sorry. Are you happy to see that he's not in the lineup when you're I don't know, I don't care. I don't need to say, say I'm happy for him. The bear is there. One of them. He's there, I, I do the, the same. So I try the pitch and that's it. I don't want to walk. I pitch it. They hit him wrong, hit him. So. You really seem to own that instant.